Professor Chiara Bruciarelli Ducci. Welcome for the third ACBI Congress in Belgrade. Uh, I have a pleasure to announce you and um, I have a pleasure to do this short interview with you. you. My first question is, uh, what is your opinion on multimodality imaging in future? Is it uh, one person who should know all the modalities or one person should be trained perfectly for one modality and know uh, the advantages and limitations of other modalities? Yeah, well, well, first of all, thank you for the invite to be here in Belgrade. Uh, it's my fourth time, and uh, so I really like to come to Serbia. And uh, I feel very connected uh, to the people in Serbia for some reason. Maybe it's the geographical uh, closeness to Italy, uh, which is my home country. So the multimodality is an interesting, uh, an interesting one. I think we are discussing it very much in ECBI actually what uh, we mean or what we want to see as a multimodality. Uh, I think we are probably moving um, towards the concept of uh, trying to train on um, be, at least at the basic level in all modalities so that as uh, cardiology imagers we understand the pros and cons of each modalities and we understand the appropriateness of sending a patient to one modality or another. But then it really you can't be an expert on everything, you know, I think we also understand that. And um, so I think then we should focus maybe in one or maximum two modalities uh, in terms of really getting a kind of excellent trainings and being, being an expert. So I think that would be probably my, my view. Uh, today you had a, a very uh, nice and a useful lecture about cardiac uh, CMR uh, and cardiac emergencies. Uh, where is the role uh, of CMR in cardiac emergencies? Yes, so the role of cardiac MRI in emergencies is also it's an interesting one and uh, in fact there is increasing interest on the role of CMR. I mean, of course ECHO has a first, uh, first modality uh, to be used, and, uh, but CMR can complement ECHO on, uh, on certain cases. Uh, it wouldn't be in the emergency as such uh, because you, know, you don't want to put a patient that's hemodynamically unstable in an MRI machine, I think. That's uh, for sure. Uh, but once a patient is stabilized and uh, if the diagnosis is unclear with, with echo, I think MRI can complement this. And in particular, we can understand a bit more about the myocardium and uh, about the tissue myocardium. And uh, so if there is edema, inflammation, scar, fibrosis. And, and so patients, for example, with acute coronary syndrome and unobstructed coronaries, uh, this is surely a diagnostic dilemma, and uh, if you do echo, it's normal sometimes, often, and uh, you don't know how to discharge the patient. And uh, MRI, I think, offers you the opportunity to pin down a diagnosis, you know, whether it's myocarditis, Takotsubo, or, or in fact a myocardial infarction with spontaneous recanalization, as we see many times. And that has an implication not just to get the right diagnosis, but to get the right treatment in place. And uh, okay. so definitely has a role. And the ESC, the new ESC guidelines for STEMI actually have a new paragraph on this minoca, myocardial infarction and obstructive coronaries. Professor Chiara, did you have a role model? If yes, who was that and why? So yes, I think it's important to have um, role models. I have a few, I had a few people in my career um, kind of being um, representing a role model. I never actually was advised or told exactly what to do. I think so I never had a mentor on that aspect. Although I had a, my professor in uh, cardiology in Italy, when I was a cardiology trainee, he told me, oh, you should learn CMR. I think it's interesting. And, uh, and, uh, and then he arranged for me to go to the United States, but at my own cost. <laughs> and so it's, uh, he didn't quite send me there, but I went there, I guess. Um, and, um, but he was a good advice. And I think uh, then uh, I've done my part, I guess, to capitalize on that advice. And so, you know, he was, he was an important person, I think, in my career, and uh, I owe him a lot. In more recent years, I guess my role models are um, uh, Barbara Casadei, I guess it's a role model of female in cardiology, and, uh, and so I'm looking at her as a role model on certain aspects. And in my um, kind of cardiac MRI um, kind of career, then I had Dudley Pennell, which was my supervisor for my PhD at Royal Brompton Hospital, and uh, I've been also learning a lot from him. So I guess those are the three persons at today that I can thank. Have you ever? Um, um wanted to live uh, abroad and how is it for an Italian woman to live in Bristol? Ah, yes, living in Bristol is interesting. <laughs> living in the UK I guess it's interesting but um, I like it because I've been there now 12 years uh, 
which is a long time. Of course, as I say to my English friends, you know, I'm not there for the weather. I mean, surely not. <laughs> I'm not there for the food either, <laughs> because uh, Italy has a much better offer. And uh, so my reason to live in the UK is mainly professional, of course. And, uh, but also I'm enjoying the lifestyle there. And uh, I think the UK has been a very generous country for me because uh, it's given me so many professional opportunities and uh, for which I'm grateful for. I mean, of course, I miss Italy and uh, who knows, you know, uh, where, what I will do when I grow up, when I get, well, I, I grow up even further, I guess. <laughs> Uh, whether I'll go back to Italy or not, we shall, we shall see. But um, always wanted to live abroad. Mm, not really, but uh, since I was a kid, my parents uh, basically raised me as a European, you know, even before Europe was a reality. So since I was six, they sent me to Switzerland you know, for 10 years, every July to learn French. And then I went to the United States to do some high school there. And, uh, and then I did Erasmus in Spain. And, and then finally I landed in the UK. So I've been, uh, been a gypsy a little bit, <laughs> a few years. <laughs> Professor Chiara, thank you very much for this interview and enjoy Belgrade. Yeah, uh, thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity again to be here in Serbia. And for the first time in four years, I'll enjoy Belgrade under the snow. <laughs>